based on your or the patient's specific genetic makeup and type of myeloma, your doctor will determine the best treatment plan for you. Um, your treatment regimen could consist of just one therapy or a combination of therapies. Um, of course, chemo is a toxin that, that will kill both good and bad cells within the body. So some chemo can block the action of the part of the myeloma cell, which can cause it to die. Some chemo and other therapies enhance the immune system that those cells that identify and attack cancer cells. So they work in many different ways. As far as our oral chemos, I just some examples are Revlimid, Pomalyst, Thalidomide, Cytoxin, and Laro. They can cause a lot of nausea and vomiting. We use a lot of anti-nausea meds, such as Zofran and Compazine. Um, a lot of times we will have our patients take these with food to help with digestion and um, lessen the harsh impact that the chemo has on the cells in the stomach. We see a lot of diarrhea with the oral chemo, um, not so much constipation, um, but more so diarrhea. So we definitely recommend having Imodium on hand. If it does go the route of constipation, then have stool softeners on hand. Um, neuropathy is the numbness and tingling in the hands and feet, and that can advance to, um, you know, up the arms and up the legs as well. Some of the chemos cause that. And in order to prevent or alleviate that symptom, we will adjust the chemo dose by reducing it if we can, or we can use medications like Neurontin, which is gabapentin, or Lyrica, which will help those side effects from the neuropathy pain. The lower blood counts, of course, any chemo is going to kill the good cells as well, as I said. So blood counts will be low most of the time. And we, again, will adjust the chemo dose if needed, if we can. Sometimes we have to hold the chemotherapy in order to allow the counts to recover and get to a safe level to where we can resume therapy. Sometimes we give growth factor shots, which is new Lasta or Nupagen, and um, if a patient remains with low white count for a long time, we will give those growth factor shots. Those stimulate the production of white blood cells in the body and try and kind of kickstart the body into making its own cells. Fatigue and weakness, of course, um, comes with the package. Um, the body is working hard to fight infections and also process this, this foreign toxic substance that we're giving it called chemotherapy. All of that combined, you know, the patient will need to rest more. I say rest, recover, and relax. Um, you know, allow the time to rest, allow the time to recover, and understand that your body's not going to be able to function at its highest potential as it did before chemo was started. Some of our IV chemotherapies, um, we use carfilzomib, bendamustine, doxorubicin, etoposide, vincristine, melphalan. These are some that Dr. Kumar mentioned in his slide presentation. These are given through an IV, either in the arm or through a pick line or a port under the skin. They, of course, will enter the bloodstream much faster because it goes right into, into the system. Um, so side effects can be much more pronounced. Side effects are very similar to the ones with oral chemo, so the nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. Um, some of these can cause neuropathy. They will, of course, lower the blood counts because they're killing the good cells in addition to the bad. We sometimes need to run those chemo infusions more slowly to allow the, the body to handle them, um, and we need to monitor the blood counts more closely with a lot of the IV chemos. The subcutaneous chemotherapy would be the shot under the skin, and the most common one we use is Velcade or bortezomib. It's an injection under the skin, usually in the stomach, and um, the site reactions is the most common side effect that we see a lot with the Velcade. It causes a red streak or a red, reddened area where they inject it, so the chemo areas know to rotate sites to prevent getting into the scar tissue or causing more injection reactions. Um, Velcade also can cause the nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, neuropathy. Unfortunately, all of these chemos will cause a lot of the same side effects. So managing them is going to be patient-specific as to, you know, which side effect that patient has and which, which needs to be managed. Our monoclonal antibody therapies, which Dr. Kumar mentioned, the Darzalex and Implicity or Daratumumab and Elotuzumab are our newer treatments. Um, these antibodies bind to certain proteins that are present on the myeloma cell 
and that in turn triggers the body's immune system to attack the cancer cell. So the biggest side effect that we're seeing with these types of drugs is fatigue. Um, they don't really lower the blood counts like chemo does because they're working on attacking the cancer cell rather than the good cells. When used in combination with other therapy, which we do quite frequently, um, you know, we'll use Darzalex with an oral like Revlimid and dexamethasone, and of course you'll have further side effects from those other chemos. And of course our newest thing that's out right now is the immunotherapy or the CAR-T. Um, in that case, we, um, the patient's own T cells, the T cells are a type of immune system cell. They are removed through the apheresis and then modified in a lab to strengthen the immune response and attack the myeloma cell. So it more effectively targets and destroys the cell without harming the good cells. It does cause what we call a cytokine release syndrome, or CRS, uh, and that is a systemic inflammatory response of the body. Uh, most of these patients are in the ICU for a period of time to be monitored very closely. Um, cytokine release syndrome can include high fevers, increased respiratory rate, rapid heart rate, low blood pressure, seizures, headaches, and then neurotoxicity. So they are monitored very closely and inpatient. Um, the cytokine release syndrome, though, is a diagnostic marker that indicates that the CAR T cells are working as intended to kill the cells. Steroids, one of our favorite drugs that we use, usually dexamethasone, and you'll see that that's used in almost all of our chemo regimens. Steroids regulate the immune system um, to control inflammation in the body. So the body's going to fight when we give chemo because it's a toxic substance. So the steroids will help minimize that and allow the chemo to get in and work. The dexamethasone or prednisone also is an active agent against the myeloma cells to a certain extent. So there is some benefit from the steroids on the disease itself. However, with steroids, we give them once a week, typically at a high dose, so patients will get this roller coaster symptom. Um, I call it the DEX roller, roller coaster. So they'll feel really good for two or three days after they take it. Um, you know, they eat well, their pain goes away, they're very active, drive their spouses crazy. And then they have two or three days where they come down and the body's looking for more steroid and it's not there. And then they get agitated, they don't eat well, they sleep more. So the sleeplessness issue is a big concern for a lot of patients on the steroids. They don't sleep much during those two to three days that they're on that high. And then they sleep more as they come down. And then we redo the whole thing again the next week. Another thing we have to watch for is our diabetic patients because steroids, as we all know, do cause the blood sugars to go up. So um, sometimes they will have to take extra insulin or extra oral medications on the days they take steroids in order to prevent the hyperglycemia. And finally, the bone strengtheners that Dr. Kumar had mentioned, the Zomeda and the Aridia, um, are used to strengthen the bones and help prevent fractures. Um, they have side effects in themselves. Um, they can cause bone pain because you're stimulating the bone, the bone marrow. They can cause nausea and flu-like symptoms. So Zomeda is known for that more. It's given over a 15-minute infusion, and so people tend to have these side effects more so with the Zomeda. If that happens, we will switch them to the Iridia or Pomidronate, which is given over an hour and a half, and um, they tend to tolerate that much better. Um, I think it's just because of the longer infusion rate. Of course, people can have uh, radiation to, the, to bone lesions where that will shrink the myeloma cells. Um, and then finally, bone marrow transplant, which Dr. Kumar spoke about, and that could be another whole slideshow in itself. So I'm not gonna get into that, but um, it replaces your diseased bone marrow with healthy bone marrow and um, there's a whole slew of side effects uh, related to that in itself.